So one of the things that's cool about this view is that you can see where the Thunder Lake Fault comes through. And along the faults, you can imagine the ground is, is kind of unstable um, and rock can be pretty loose. And so you've got some landslides that have happened around here. Um, and you can see up in the hill there and the fault comes right across Diablo Lake. Yeah, you got to come check out Diablo Lake. I'm loving it. How do these mountains form? I'm glad you asked. Uh, I've been wondering. Um, in fact, a lot of geologists have been wondering too. It says on the National Park Service website, the geology of this area is one of the most complex and least understood areas of North America. So it doesn't give us a lot of confidence, but uh, they do know some stuff. And one of the things they, they realize is that a lot of the formations around here were caused by terrain accretion. Um, and you think of terrain, like in these mountains, they have terrain, uh, but that's not, it's a different terrain. It's T-E-R-R-A-N-E. They, were, they think there was a big volcanic arch out, out of the Pacific, um, you know, various mountains and pieces of land on oceanic plates that moved east and collided with the North American plate. So where the west end of North America is now um, has been built west as all, a lot of this, these pieces of land have collided onto North America and added to it. And chaos ensued, mountains were formed, magma was formed, um, and also faults were created. Uh, faults are cracks in the Earth's crust. They're all over the place. And there are three major faults here in the North Cascades. Um, they're lateral strike-slip faults, meaning the land blocks next to each other have moving side to side um, as opposed to up and down. And the uh, Straight Creek Fault here, uh, it's shown that it's actually been shifted 63 miles north and south. So that's pretty interesting, that's for sure. And the final contributor to the awesomeness of North Cascades is, was the last ice age. About 26,000 to 13,000 years ago, um, the Cordillera Ice Sheet was a big player in, in how this land was formed. Uh, it came down from Canada, and it was a huge ice sheet. Uh, it actually went down in the Puget Sound where Seattle is, um, and the whole Puget Sound was covered by a thousand meters high of ice. So next time you're in Seattle, think about that. That's crazy. There was a thousand meters of ice above me. And it would kind of go back and forth over, you know, warmer periods. It would retreat, colder periods would come down, um, basically shaping the land around here. Eventually it retreated, and it really carved out some awesome valleys. Some beautiful U-shaped valleys, glacial troughs, um, and created some other basins where awesome lakes were formed. And also there was a lot of water flow from it um, that, you know, contributed to erosion as well. So, uh, yeah, glacier, the glass ice age, and glaciation played a big role in shaping the beauty of North Cascades. Wow, that is nice. Pun intended. Literally, that rock is called nice. It's a German word for sparkly or bright. What we're looking at here is some cool stuff. This is the foundation of the North Cascades. And this rock is old. It is about 100 million years old. It's some ancient stuff. Um, and we're looking at, at rock that was buried about 24 kilometers underground. Now, that's a lot of heat and pressure, as you can imagine, that could build up on rock uh, like that. And so this is metamorphic rock. So it used to be something else. This was granite and, and sandstone, but with the amount of pressure on it, it metamorphosed, nice word, huh, uh, into nice. So um, it became something else. And then about 40 million years ago, you can see a couple of streaks in there, that white stuff. Um, there, that's some feldspar and some quartz that got in there. Um, and so, yeah, we're looking back in time quite a ways, that's for sure. That's nice. Folks, that is Liberty Bell Mountain. Uh, it is really cool looking. Um, people come from all over to take a look at it. But it's also really famous for rock climbing. Um, as you can imagine, that would be a great challenge for climbing. Uh, maybe I'll do it someday, that'd be sweet. Uh, but yeah, that is a big area of granite. Um, and it's all part of the Golden Horn Batholith. Um, you're like, what? Batholith? So remember, um, oceanic plates subducting under the North American plate here, um, going down where it's hot, gets melted, magma's formed.
So you have all this like liquefied rock and it'll start oozing around, going in and all, all parts around underground there. Uh, and then it can harden and uh, turn into solid rock. And um, that's granite. Uh, at that point, it's igneous rock because, you know, cooled magma is uh, igneous rock. So now we have intruded uh, igneous rock or intrusive igneous rock. And there you go. That's a batholith. So Liberty Bell Mountain is part of the Golden Horn batholith, and it is awesome.